So hi everyone and welcome on Econ Easy. So today's video is going to be about the demand and the next video is going to be about the supply. So the first thing we're going to be talking about today is the law of demand. What is it? Well, the law of demand says that there exists an inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded. For example, when the price of coke goes down, the quantity demanded by the consumers will increase. And as you can see on this table, when we have, for example, the price of one, the quantity demanded is 50, but when we have a price of four, the quantity demanded is only 10. And you can see that on the graph also. And so the law of demand is also driven by or influenced by three main characteristics, three main things. The first one is the substitution effect. Basically, it says that an increase in the price of Coke will motivate consumers to buy relatively cheaper substitutes, such as Pepsi, for example. So when the price of Coke, so when the price of Coke increases, the quantity demanded of Pepsi will increase and the quantity demanded of Coke will decrease. But it also works the other way around. If the price of Coke decreases, the quantity demanded of Coke will increase and the quantity demanded of Pepsi will decrease because they are substitutes. Another effect is the income effect. And this time it says that an increase in the price of Coke will affect the purchasing of the purchasing power, sorry, of consumers' income. And so basically, if the price of Coke increases, I will buy less of it because with my income, I can buy less of it. And if the price of Coke decreases, I can buy more of it because my income is the same, the price is lower, so I have more purchasing power, I will buy more Coke. And finally, the shape of the demand is also driven by the law of diminishing marginal utility. And basically, it says that as you consume more Coke, you get less and less additional utility or satisfaction from each unit. Basically, the first glass or the first bottle of Coke gives you a lot of satisfaction, but the eighth glass of Coke will give you way less satisfaction, marginal satisfaction, okay? And so basically that's why the demand has this shape, because as consumers consume more quantity, each quantity gives them less satisfaction, so they will be willing to pay a lower price. So that's why it is downward sloping. So we talked about like the demand and now we will talk about shifts in demand. So basically there is a shift in demand when another factor than the price is changing and we will see the five big shifters just after. So basically the demand can either decrease or increase. And when we say that the demand decreases, it moves to the left. And when the demand increases, it moves to the right. And so let's see why it can be shifting. So as I said, there are five big shifters of demand. The first one is the number of consumers. If the number of consumers increases, the demand increase and so it shifts to the right but if there are less consumers that are paying for that good well the demand decreases and so it moves to the left the second shifter is the taste or we could also say the preferences of the consumers if all of a sudden everybody is loving coke the demand will increase and so the demand will shift to the right. But if, because there is a scandal or there is like 
I don't know, a new study that says that Coke is very bad for your health and consumers stop buying it, the demand will decrease and it will shift to the left. Now, another shifter is the price of related goods. And there are two types of related goods. First one is the substitutes. So as we said before, for example, Coke and Pepsi are substitutes. And so the price of one, if the price of Coke increases, the quantity demanded of Pepsi will increase because people will buy less Coke and will buy more Pepsi because it is cheaper. And another type of related goods are complements. For example, let's say that Coke and fries are complement. You only, uh, you only drink Coke when you are eating fries. And so if the price of Coke decreases, well, the quantity demanded of fries will increase because if the price of Coke decreases, you'll buy more Coke. And if you're only drinking Coke when you're eating fries, you will want to eat more fries. The fourth shifter is the income. And so the income can have a different effects on the demand depending on what type of good we are looking at. There are two types of goods that we will focus on today. The first one is normal goods. And so basically in that case, income and demand for the good are directly related, meaning that when my income increases, the demand for the good will increase. So for example, when my income increases, my demand for Coke will increase. And the other way around, if my income decreases, the, de the demand for Coke will decrease. Now the other type of good is inferior good. And this time income and demand for the good are inversely related. Meaning that when my income increases, my demand for that good will decrease. And when my income decreases, my demand for the good will increase. That's the case for rice, for example. That's something cheap that you buy when you don't have a lot of money, for example. But when you have more money, you switch for a more uh, valuable or a more, a more tasteful uh, good that will replace the rice. Okay, and the last shifter is expectations. It's whatever is expected in the future, if we expect the price to rise or to fall or the, the market to produce another good, anything, expectations of the consumers. And so basically, you have to understand that there is a difference between a change in quantity demanded and a change in demand. It's very fundamental. So if you look here, we have three points, A, B, and C. And basically, B and C are about the same quantity, but the price is different. And so going from a quantity of 25 to a quantity of 10, there are two paths, two possibilities. So we are starting at A, and if we go from A to B, this is a change in quantity demanded, there is a change of price. You see the price goes from three to four, and the quantity demanded is 10. And so we are moving along the same curve. That's when there is a change of price, it causes a change in quantity demanded, but we are on the same curve. Now we could also go from A to C and reach a quantity of 10, and in that case, the price is still the same. What happened here? Well, it was a decrease in demand, so the demand shifted to the left and the quantity demanded now is 10, but the price is still three, okay? So what you should remember is that when the price changes, either increases or decreases, the demand stays the same, we just move along the curve. There is a change in the quantity demanded. But when it's one of the five shifters that moves the entire curve, they create a shift of the demand curve, which is not the same as moving along the curve. So the shifters causing a change in demand. So the shifters are causing a change in demand and the price 
is causing a change in the quantity demanded. All right, that's it for today. I hope you understood the law of demand, how the demand works, and I'll see you next for the supply. In the meantime, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. See you soon, bye.